Hi everyone, it's Greg from Vancouver, Washington with the latest mod to my 2019 RPOD Model 180. One of the things we love about our RPODs is customizing them and then sharing our mods with the community. I hope this particular mod is helpful not only for RPOD owners, but also RV owners who are thinking about a simpler inverter install for your rig. In other videos I've made about mods to the Pinecone Inn, I've discussed that I am often working on the road, including doing my job as well as working on videos like this one. On a recent trip, I was boondocking for several days and I found that my laptop batteries don't last very long when I'm video editing. Time to install an inverter so I can keep working when boondocking. I will be installing this 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. A pure sine wave inverter is more expensive than a modified sine wave inverter, but my research said that if you're powering sensitive electronics, this is the way to go. My inverter comes with a remote wired on-off switch and it has its own fuses. In an RPOD Model 180, the rig's electrical box is underneath the seat of the dinette here. I realize this may seem like cheating to have everything so accessible. It kind of reminds me of the VW engines from the 1970s. Wow, there is just like so much room in here. Okay, step one, as you know, unhook all power from the batteries by removing all contacts to the positive red terminals and unplug your RPOD from shore power. Next step, I remove the 110 outlet from this location on the front of the dinette seat. This location will be where I've chosen to place the on off switch for the inverter and also makes the area a little safer for my dog because she sleeps here in this space. Next, install the inverter's remote switch in its place. Inside the cabinet, I will rewire the 110 outlet into a proper junction box and I mounted the outlet and inverter onto a board so that they are completely secure. Then I attach the board to the frame of the dinette seat. There are four connections to the inverter. I used a voltmeter to find the hot wire from the battery, but it's pretty obvious as it's the thickest red wire in the cabinet and directly wired to the circuit breaker that's mounted on the floor. The red wire from the inverter attaches to the power coming in from the battery. The black negative wire from the inverter attaches to the terminal bar and conveniently there was an open post on the bar. The green wire is for proper grounding and runs from the inverter's grounding post and according to the instructions is intended to attach to the trailer's metal frame on the undercarriage of the RV. Amazingly enough, there just happened to be a spare conduit through the floor right here in this electrical box sealed up with some expanding foam. So I just made sure the runway was clear and then it was easy to attach the green ground wire to the frame of the R-Pod. The final wire attaches to the on-off switch that is on the front of the dinette seat. Okay, everybody, I've got everything put back together, so I'm just going to make a final quick walkthrough and talk about the new sine wave inverter and how I'm going to use it. So, as you know, this is the work surface here, and then underneath this is a dinette seat. Your full electronics cabinet is in here. All right. So you can see in the far corner over there, I created a little raceway there for the cord that goes up to the outlet that is on the work surface, okay? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave this plugged into my 110 outlet. And when I'm on shore power, I'm just going to leave it plugged in there and I think, and leave the inverter off. I could leave this plug uh, in the inverter full time and just run those outlets through the inverter whether I'm boondocking or not, but I'm going to switch it over every time I need to. And there's a few reasons for that. One is I think that by shutting the inverter down when I'm not needing it, I'm going to save um, on the lifespan of the inverter. Second thing is, is there's a fan on the inverter. So, um, you know, when you are using it, if it's drawing power, the fan comes on and it makes just a really soft hum. Uh, barely noticeable at all, but it is noticeable. And so I'm going to, um, you know, why have more ambient noise if you don't need it? So when I am boondocking, what I am going to do is I'm going to simply just change outlets, 
shut the uh, dinette seat and then there turn it on and as you can see by this right here it's charging everything worked perfectly happy to say first time too all right hey thanks for watching everybody hope it was helpful go ahead and uh, uh, check out my other videos or subscribe okay talk to you soon bye